Okay, this next example is basically a contrived little program uh, just to demonstrate uh, a bunch of uh, Rebel GUI features and uh, some other typical programming techniques. Uh, what it's going to do is download uh, an image from the internet, display it, allow you to apply some effects to it, allow you to save it to the hard drive, and uh, it'll also demonstrate how to use some of the other GUI features. Um, one of the big ones right off the bat um, is this thing called, uh, uh, or this type of button called a choice button, which you'll see used twice in here. Um, if we put that in a view layout, this is fairly simple to use. It's sort of a quick little um, way to create a type of menu, a, a, a choice in Rebel. So again, use a view layout to create the GUI. In that block, you put an item called choice. You can give it, uh, this is just a, a descriptor to make it tan. And you put the items that you want to choose from. And here's what the choice button looks like. It's tan. And you can choose between these, these different items. And of course, like any other item in Rebel, if you want to make it do something, uh, you can put a little action block here. We'll just print the value that was selected. And you'll see that when it's selected, it does that. It prints about. You can put as many items as you want in that, that little drop down button. Very simple way to create um, menu type choices. Um, and there's a more complex version of that. Um, here we've got, again, in this is inside uh, a GUI block, which is going to be sent to a view layout. Um, you can see here there's a choice uh, item. It's 160 pixels across, which is tan. And on that um, button, we put this text. It's not span several lines, so we're trimming it. And the items that are going to appear on that button are uh, the multi line quoted save image, and then view saved image, and download new image, and then multi line again. Uh, Expanse of the lines, and there's a little separator, and then the word exit. So all those things are going to appear on this choice button, and that's going to occur at this pixel location, uh, 20 over 2 down. Um, we'll look at more of that GUI in a second, but uh, to start out, and we have a header, and just so you see in this example, you don't need to really include a title. All you really need. Um, is the word rebel and a block, even if it's empty. We start this program by uh, listing uh, a number of effects that are included in rebel, the image effects that you can use inside a GUI. And we put that in the block um, and assign that to the word effects, effect dash types. Uh, we're also going to use, again, this sort of contrived just to demonstrate how it can be done. Um, we're going to use this play sound module that we created in the earlier part of the tutorial, which we saved on the C drive. Um, we're going to play a sound when the program shuts down. Uh, the way we import that module is uh, use the do function and pull up the play sound.r file. That allows us to play a WAV file. Uh, the first part of the program here, again, we're going to use familiar request text with a title and some default text. The title is going to say enter a URL of the image to use. Again, we've got some multi-line stuff going on here. Normally in a program you wouldn't have to do all this multi-line trimming and, and so forth. Just because it's on a web page we want it to sit all within this little area. Uh, we don't have this on one line, but it could all be on one line. And typically in a program it would all be on one line. Um, so again, we're requesting this text. And it says enter the UR URL of the image. Um, and the default text in there is this the rebel URL of the image. Um, and that's being converted to a URL and assigned to the word image 
hyphen URL. And just to make sure this is clear how this sort of assigning works, if it comes across this, the first thing it sees is a word being defined. So it assigns this. The first thing it comes across that it's supposed to assign is this to URL. Well, it can't do anything with to URL until it has something uh, to be used by that function. So this is going to return something. What it takes as a parameter is uh, some text or some, some item. It converts that text to a URL format. So Rebel makes sure that it's being used as a URL format. Well, that text is going to be gotten from this function, the request text function with some little uh, um, refinements. And that is gotten from the user. So Rebel just goes along. Whenever it's dealing with functions, it expects and sees something that, that it needs a parameter for. It goes to the next thing. If that needs a parameter, it does the processing on the next thing. And when all the processing is done, it just sends that back. So this image URL is affecting is, is expecting some data. This to URL is expecting some data. This request text is expecting some data, which it gets to the user. And Rebel constantly does that sort of cascading. When you're writing code, you'll see cascading items on a single line. It's very important in the, uh, the Rebel syntax. So we get that uh, image URL from the user. And uh, next, we're going to create a GUI block. It's not actually shown here. We're just creating this block, and later we'll send that to a view layout, uh, calling it GUI. And it's all of this stuff, a ton of stuff. goes all the way down uh, to the bottom here. And the majority of this program is just a bunch of formatting uh, to demonstrate some of the ways you can format information in a GUI, in a GUI block. Um, some comments there to explain everything. Uh, the across word um, uh, lets you align things whenever you put something in a GUI and you have the word across, they'll appear next to each other, left to right. Um, by default, typically, as you've seen so far, if you put a bunch of items in a GUI rebel, just put them vertically, align them vertically. Uh, this little space um, modifier lets you set how far apart the widgets are, and we're going to set them right next to each other, across from each other. The word at, like we just saw a minute ago, uh, lets you select a, an actual pixel location in the GUI where you put the next item. And this, this item is going to be that choice that we saw already, a 160 pixel tan choice button with all these items. So image, view, view image, download new image, and exit, and a little spacer. Okay, and then there's an action block for that button. So following that button, here's the action block. And that actually goes all the way down to here. And you'll see in that action block, there are a bunch of if statements to decide what to do. This is really just an alternative to a switch statement. Um, it's a different way to do what we do. We could have a switch statement and have the uh, value compared to all of these things. But it's the exact same thing as a switch statement. If the value selected is save image, then we do all these things. We uh, make a file name, and that's looking, that's going to uh, use or assign to the word file name something which is going to be converted. So the next thing you see is this to file. That expects some data, uh, and that data is going to be gotten from the user, gotten from, or some info gotten from the user. It has again a title. Um, and a default, a default file name. Once that file name's gotten, it's going to save as a PNG file, as an image file, to that file name the um, uh, picture which uh, we had gotten originally, which we had downloaded. 